Hi guys, today I'm going to talk to you about the real deal that is Nearpod. Um, it is probably the one digital resource online platform that I am not willing to part with ever. Um, I don't care what kind of budget cuts came down the pike. If my district came to me and said, we're doing away with everything, including your online textbooks, um, you get to pick one thing to keep, what would it be? I would say Nearpod hands down. Um, with this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick overview of Nearpod. And when I say quick, I'm not sure how quick that would be because I'm a little bit obsessed with it and I might go on a little more than I mean to. And I have no editing tools. This is Zoom record land. So let's see how this goes. I want to start by giving you a disclaimer. I have a district Nearpod account. Um, I discovered Nearpod about five years ago when I went to a Science Education Council of Ohio, a SECO symposium, and I went to a session and I didn't really take the lesson back to my classroom to use. It didn't quite fit into my curriculum, but the presenter used Nearpod to deliver the information and I left there thinking, I am never going to give a regular PowerPoint to my students ever, ever again. And it has evolved for me from a tool for delivering um, PowerPoint presentations for notes in an interactive way where I can also collect some formative um, assessment data as I go to delivering content to my kids where they're working independently and self-paced. When we move to remote learning because of this awful pandemic, and if you're watching this in the future, yeah, 2020 is as bad as they say it was. Um, only hoping it gets better. When we switch to remote learning, Nearpod was my absolute lifesaver. Like our switch was seamless for me and my kids. And it wasn't just due to Nearpod, it was also due to me teaching in a new way using the grid method. I'm going to put a plug in for that here right now. If you want to know what that is, go to teachbetter.com and look for the grid method. Um, that's all I'm going to say about it for right now. I'll do a video on that later. I did do a, a little bit of one already for the Ohio Department of Education, and you can find that by Googling ODE resources and scrolling down that page to find the recording for the tale of two teachers. I presented part one. So back to Nearpod. Um, I used it not only for delivering new content, I was able to use it to collect assignments remotely. So my kids would be able to access handouts either because they were mailed to them or emailed to them or on an online platform. But then I was able to make Nearpod presentations where I was asking them questions about what was in that assignment and they could submit those answers from where they were with either their cell phone or a tablet or their computer. And I was able to give authentic grades. Like I wasn't just making stuff up. Oh, you get credit because you did it. I was able to interact with them and see what they actually knew. So with that being said, let me show you what Nearpod is. So my page is going to look a little bit different than yours. If you already have a Nearpod account and you hadn't used it in a while and you're just stopping by here for a refresher, or if this is brand spanking new to you, um, mine is going to look a little bit different because my district did pay for a district account and there are some licenses that have been distributed and because I'm the one who begged for it first, they made me an administrator. Still haven't figured out all those tools yet. But what I want you to get from this is what Nearpod offers. So what you're looking at right now is my library and I can get back to here anytime by clicking on the little library icon. Over here is me and behind me are my settings. And within those settings are things that I can enable, some advanced things like an immersive reader, um, like the collaborate board that I'll show you in just a minute being used in student pace mode where they're working at their own pace and not live pace where I am presenting. Um, so there are some things in there that I'll get into in another video in a more advanced session, but that's where those live. This plus button is what will help you make these folders that are living down here to help keep yourself organized. So this lesson page that's in my library, I kind of refer to this as my landing page. Whenever you 
pull a Nearpod presentation from Nearpod's library. They have some really cool ones already made or you have a district account and you download one from the school library or another teacher has shared one with you or you create one from scratch, it's gonna start right here on this landing page. Unless you've made a folder and you can build one, once you get inside the folder, you can build one here too. So I'm gonna come back to the My Library again and I'm gonna show you first a report because if nothing else would sell you on this being one of the best tools ever for a teacher, and by the way, there's a free version you can get started with, it would be the reports. So I presented Nearpod the other day to some math teachers across the state of Ohio, and I hope they don't get mad. You may see some of their names when I pull up this report. But within the report, what you get is this overall summary. And there were things that didn't get answered because I'm gonna be honest, in my presentation, I blew past those and didn't give them time to answer. But it lets you see right away, you know, what percent of your students completed it and what percent did not. And when you scroll down through here, you're able to see this is what percent they got correct on quiz questions. And yes, I asked these folks to miss some on purpose so we could see that data. Um, this is what percent of the open-ended questions they actually answered. And again, I didn't give them time to answer. I just wanted to show them what the feature was. 100% or none of the draw it questions that got answered. Matching pairs, fill in the blanks, and then overall participation. This overall participation piece, I find to be important because if I log on and I'm looking at a report, especially during remote learning, and I see that, that Amanda got a 67% on, on her quiz score, but then I look over here and I see her participation is 86%, that tells me she probably didn't finish it all the way to the end. Maybe her internet fizzed out. Maybe she started it before she had to go to work and she had to leave before she got it done. So that participation piece tells me a lot. And then when I go to put in the grade, if this is what it's sitting at, I'll put a note in the comments, you know, make sure you go back and finish that and let me know when you do. So the way I assign points for my Nearpod assignments, again, using the grid method, um, for me, this is a, a formative assessment piece of information. Did you understand this content as you went through it? I don't typically use Nearpod as a summative assessment. You can by changing your settings to give you more test security. Um, I don't put a lot of pressure on tests because of the way I teach. And again, that'll be another video. Oh my gosh, I should keep a list. Um, but what this allows my kids to do with the settings that I have, they can go back, they can change answers, they can see what they got wrong because for me and my style of teaching, this is about helping them on their path to mastery and for them to see, do I really understand it? Because let's be honest, the kids never know what they don't know. They don't know that they don't know it. Um, and this gives them that heads up as they're, as they're on that path. So that's what a report looks like for each one of these things. I can click on the quiz and I can look at each one of the quiz questions and I can see how it went. So this gives me information about what do I need to do for individual students and what do I need to do addressing things or misconceptions to the class as a whole. Um, when you put quiz questions, these are gonna be multiple choice questions throughout your presentation, you can either put them like in a clump with all the questions together at one, three here and two here and 10 at the end, but the score that you're getting and the overall look is all of those questions all together unless you look at them individually. For open-ended, I would click on this, and for everyone who attempted this particular Nearpod, it would show me what their answers are. Another cool thing with open-ended, you can enable audio so your students can communicate with you verbally. They can read what they wrote down and explain to you, or they could be looking at their assignment and give you a verbal assessment. So that quick conversations that I used to have with my kids in the classroom that we couldn't have while we were apart, I did that this way with Nearpod. I would post an open-ended question, I would put the record option, and I would say, hey guys, talk to me about this. And then I could come here and listen to each one of their responses individually. Nearpod also allows you to embed Flipgrid 
and you're not seeing Flipgrid results here because you would have to log on to your other Flipgrid account to see that, but they are very compatible with each other. Withdrawal it. This one is really good because what you do, upload a picture, and I was presenting to math teachers, so that's what this is, and then the kids draw on the picture itself. You could upload something like graph paper. For me, teaching science, I could upload a picture of the heart and ask them to put an X on the atrium and draw a circle on the ventricle and put a T on the tricuspid valve. Like I could go and I can see that. And then when I come in to say, to grade it and say, hey, how are my kids doing? I have each one of these. Matching pairs of this one too, because you can do things like terms and definitions for younger kids. You could have a number of items and then the number and the number in words and they need to match those things. What's really cool about it is they click on one, they click its pair. If it's correct, it lights up green and then it kind of gets shadowed. If it's wrong, they light up red and they stay in full color on the screen for them to try again. Collaborate, love, love, love this feature. What it does is you pose a question to the kids and what they will do is they will post their responses. On the student view, there are no names associated with it. It's all anonymous, so it makes it non-threatening. As a teacher, you saw that I just click no, just post them, I don't need to check them. If you have the middle school, grade, school grades and the kids are a little bit ornery, you might not want them to post to the whole group until you've had a chance to check it. But I could come back in and I can look at this and say, yeah, that shouldn't be there and I can trash it and I can make it go away. The kids can like each other's post and as the teacher, you have the ability to come like them as well. So this could be used for brainstorming. This could be used to help prompt each other's learning. Um, with the expectation being that everyone will post an answer, but it's okay to look at what other people said. And if you were thinking the same thing, you can like theirs, but then do something to add to it. So that's the collaborate board. I have to move myself out of the way so I can get back to my information. Fill in the blank is really cool. Um, you type in a passage and then you drag the words over to the side to make a word bank. So I'm gonna go out of the report right now so I can take you and show you some of those features. And I'm gonna do that by going to this particular Nearpod that I made. Um, and I made it simply to show the features that Nearpod does offer. I will do another, near, another video on how to create an account, how to build your first Nearpod, um, and how to use your reports, maybe how to do some of those more advanced settings. So there may be two to three more videos that go along with this one. I wanted to do this one to have you see, is this something that's worth my time? Is this something that I want to investigate? So this notice, it says live lesson and student paced lesson. With the free account, your only option is a live lesson. And if I click this, it's going to bring up a code and it's going to ask me, do I want to use the code from the presentation I did the other day or do I want to launch a new code? This is really helpful for high school teachers or teachers who change kids and they're in different groups throughout the day. I launch one code per bell so that I get my kids in separate reports based on the bell that they're in. Also, I could come back to this a year from now, that code would have expired and I can release a new code for my new presentation. So live option is all you're gonna have with the free account. But if you start the year with remote learning and you're using your conference tool and my dog is gonna start barking at a squirrel, I'm gonna um, ignore her I think is what we're gonna try to do. So if you launch it in a, live, in a live lesson, you're gonna have your kids in Google Meet or Zoom or whatever it is you're using, open a second window, go to nearpod.com and put in the code that you give them. And then they're gonna, their screen with the content that you're sharing, you're not gonna share it on your Zoom screen. They're gonna be getting it in that Nearpod. You control what's on their screen. They can't move ahead. So you control the pace of a live lesson. So all your kids are on the same page at the same time for synchronous learning. 
if you get an upgraded account, so with the gold account, which is $10 a month, you then get access to the student paste option. And in a student paste option, here are the codes. You can see that they're going to expire in 28 days. I can launch another one and I can increase how long that code is going to be good for. So those of you who want to try it out from the student side, you can do that. You just go to nearpod.com and you put in that code. Um, what it does in student pace mode is you're not in control of the pace at which they go through it. They're in control of that. Nearpod added some pretty awesome features that you can add to each slide, like a timer, that you only have this amount of time to get this done. They also added up here in the advanced settings where you can choose that students can't go to the next slide until they have answered a question on the previous slide. So they can't keep skip your short answer question and move on to the content. They can't skip the matching and move on to the content. Um, it requires them to submit answers. And that's been super helpful while we've been apart. It ended all of my emails saying, hey, you skipped something, go back. They can't skip it. Now, my advice would be to launch it and you're not able to skip until the due date and everybody's had a chance to attempt it. But then I would disable that and launch another code with it disabled for kids who had to leave it and need to come back to it. Um, if they log on with the same exact device using the same exact name, it'll pick up where they left off. But if they log on with another device and you've got it set on you have to submit everything, they're going to have to redo everything again. Um, with Nearpod, one of the features I really like is that your students don't have to create an account. They just need to go to nearpod.com, use the code that you give them, and then use a name that you'll recognize. So I kind of drilled it into my kids' heads. I need you on Nearpod and Quizzes and Kahoot and the other things that I use to use your first and your last name so I know it's you. If you're using a name I'm not going to recognize, I can't give you the points. And if you try to claim it as yours later, I'm going to say, uh-uh, you needed to follow the directions and go back and do it using your name. So I'm going to click on here and I'm going to click preview. So you could see, actually, I'm going to click edit. So you can see what it looks like on my end. So notice it's giving me a big heads up that I have active codes. And if I continue editing this, those codes are no longer going to work. And that's because that version of the Nearpod doesn't exist anymore. So that code won't work if I change these. So what I'll do instead is if I click here, I have the option to share it, to duplicate it, to move it to a folder. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate it real quick so that you guys can see what it looks like from the editing side. And then maybe I'll finally shut up and let you go play with the code. Um, but you do have the power to turn me off anytime. So this is what it looks like in the editing mode. So if I want to add a new slide, I can click here or I can go to where in the presentation I'm wanting to add that new slide and I can put it right slide. It lets you choose what type of slide you want. So Nearpod offers you two categories. You can add content or you can add activities. Some of the content, and you saw some of that show up in the report, typical slides that look very much like a PowerPoint slide. Vocabulary, they have um, rap videos that cover vocabulary. 3D models, simulations, math and science teachers. You can sort these by subject and by grade level and embed a FET simulation directly in your Nearpod presentation. Um, field trips, these are really cool. They're like 3D um, or three-dimensional photographs where you drop your students into a location and they can look above, below, um, all around themselves from that one spot and check a place out that we could never travel. This Desmos graphing calculator. If you have the free account, this may not be visible to you. With the gold account and above, it is. Um, and that, again, has all kinds of good stuff to choose from. Um, it's got staff picks, you can filter, you can search, and you drop these right into your presentation to help your kids interact with that math content. Let me go back. So I'm going to hit cancel because I'm not going to add that guy. 
So I'm coming back to add. I didn't add one yet. Canceled that. Let's look at the rest of the content we could use. Um, BBC videos. You can search for these right here within the screen. Sway isn't something I've used before. Slideshow, this puts like a mini PowerPoint within your PowerPoint. I don't love this. Even my high school kids will get lost on this one a little bit. I've used it in live paste mode before so that when we got to a section that they needed to maybe take some notes independently, they would have control over that little mini slideshow within that slide. But when I've launched these in student paste mode, it, that, that wasn't in your PowerPoint, Ms. Reuter. Um, it was in the Nearpod, I promise. No, it wasn't there. And then I'm like, do you see over here to the side? You could have clicked through this. Um, video, you can embed a video right here. I want to show you this because I love this. You can search YouTube right here and watch this. I'll even look at how to Nearpod to see what other videos have been made. And lots of people make Nearpod tutorials, and I'm jumping on that bandwagon because I didn't really find one that, that suited my style, so I made my own. But you can preview the videos right here within Nearpod. You don't have to go in and out to another screen to do that, and I love that a lot. It is a huge time saver. You can put an audio file, PDF viewer, upload those PDF pages, and when you're creating a Nearpod from scratch, if you have a PDF file, each one of those pages can get inserted as its own page. You can add voiceover and read to your students. I just can't even get over it. Um, adding activities. These are the things where you're going to collect information from your kids. So time to climb, this is a gamified multiple choice type thing. And when you're playing it together, they're all seeing each other climb up the mountain against each other. If they're doing it in student pace mode, they see who played before them and where they were in that point in the um, competition and where they're at trying to catch up. It's, it's, it's a fun way to do that. Here's the open-ended questions, the matching pairs, the quiz, flip grid. I talked about some of these things in the report, draw it, collaborate. You can put in a poll just to gather some information. So multiple choice, but not choosing a correct answer. Fill in the blank and then memory test literally is like that memory game. I could see that for younger kids, but not necessarily for my guys. And then web content, this is where you are cutting a web address into here. Maybe you use Edpuzzle and you want them to do this Edpuzzle video in the middle of your Nearpod you can link to that from here, which I think is super helpful and awesome too. So I am going to show you, so this was a video that I embedded. This is using web content and it takes them to another website. It'll open another window for them to view that. Um, this one, all I did was make a page and I wanted to show you how you can search Google images from within Nearpod. So if I set this as a background by putting it down here so I could type over it, but it's super easy to make it go away and it's super easy to find another one. So I can click on here and I can search Google images from right here and maybe I want a different happy face. So it's going to bring them up and I can pick the one. Boy, there's some not so nice ones on here. I'm going to go with that guy. He looks, he looks pretty easy. Oh, it didn't like that one. So why did you give it to me as an option here, Pod? Um, it'll make it super easy to come find another one. So I'll start right here. Hopefully it will show me one I like this time. So let's go with this guy. And right there he is. I can change the size. And you can also do the same thing down here in the body of your slide. So that's how easy it is to insert pictures. When you're doing draw it and searching for a picture, right there. You also can upload them from your computer. So matching pairs, I'll show you real quick what that looks like. So this is on my side, and I did this for elementary type kids. And again, that um, code that I put up, I'll back back out of here, and I'll launch a code again if you want to try it on your end. I will warn you that once... Um, so many people have used the code. Like I think mine can host up to 200. Your free account, each code that you launch is good for I think up to 40 people. So here is what the preview looks like. I, this is what it would look like from the student side. So if I go back, 
So here's my presentation, what it would look like on the student side, I'm previewing it. And you can also interact with it from the preview side, so you can try it out before your kids do. Um, these, these directions drop down in the first couple of um, presentations your kids do. I would make sure you include it in the directions that to make the directions disappear, you just click that arrow. I'm going to do this wrong on purpose so you can see what that looks like. And then if I want the correct answer, I can do this and you'll see how then they shade. The kids know not to pick that again. Now, if I had in my advanced settings that you have to complete each um, interactive assignment, when they click this arrow, it wouldn't let them go. It would say, wait, you're not finished. Um, I don't have that set on this one yet, so I can skip so I can show you some more things. So here's a quiz. When you create the quizzes, unlike Pear Deck, where you can't select what the right answer is, with Nearpod quizzes, you can select this is the correct answer. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to get one wrong on purpose. And notice it says skip quiz. That won't be there if you change um, the settings to, to have them participate. So yeah, let's do this one wrong. And let's go to the next one because I want you to see. Um, oh, and it's not because I am in preview mode. If this was your students, they would have hit submit and it would have brought up a pie chart showing them how many questions they got right. And below there, if you have that setting again in the advanced settings, allowing them to see their answers, they can see what they got wrong and then they can try it again. This is a short answer question. I recorded my voice asking um, the question. That's an option you have, and I'll do that again in a, in a future video. And this is where they could record their responses. And my dog sees a squirrel and is losing her mind right now. Here is that virtual field trip. So I dropped them at the Great Pyramid with the Sphinx, and you can see how you can look all around if you want to. You control it with your mouse or your touchpad. This was that math problem, asking them to do their work. They use these tools down here to draw. You can also type on there if you want to. You can bring up a keyboard. They can also search for images within Nearpod and upload images. So if you're asking them to find things for you, and that's true for the bulletin board as well, if you were working remotely and you asked them to do something like a nature scavenger hunt and you had them taking pictures with their phone, they could post the pictures here on this, on this um, interactive bulletin board and they would be able to see each other's pictures. They wouldn't know who posted what, but again, on your end, when you look at it through the reports, you would see the names associated with that. Here's the fill in the blank. All I did was type a passage and then I went back and I clicked on the words that I wanted to move to the word bank. Um, a word of caution is that if you were trying, like here's the word and then the word was here, you need only to have one of those in your word bank because it, it not only looks at it for the letters, but also placement. And if I had clicked this one into the word bank as well and tried to put this one in that spot, it would tell the kids they were wrong. And even though they were choosing the correct word, it'd make them lose their mind a little bit. I learned that the hard way. And it will put sentences um, at the end of sentences. It'll put the period with the word. I do that sometimes on purpose, especially with tougher content as some gimmies, um, just to help get them started. So those slow starters to give them something like that is helpful. This is from 3D Model Land. And again, the kids could drop it, drag it, look at it from all directions. The library for those isn't huge, but the ones that are there are really good. And I'm waiting to see what this guy is because I don't remember what I put there. But I can in the preview. And that was a FET simulation and then the Desmos calculator. So I can end the preview at any time and come back to edit mode. So I'm gonna take this and I need to change the title a little bit. And it's gonna be how to Nearpod. This is gonna be my duplicate just so that I remember what it is. It will ask you for like subject and grade level and that's more to help you with searching than anything. So I know I've talked a lot um, and I hope, and I'm gonna launch this student pace mode so anybody who wants to try it out, 
I am going to extend the due date. So hopefully some folks will even bother to find my videos here and there. So let's have this guy work. It'll work all the way through November. How about that? You know what? Why don't we just get ourselves the heck out of 2020 and see if we can't time travel to 2021 and hope that it's all better. Um, this view progress piece, this is what you would see in live pace mode and that'll be another video because I'm going to need somebody here home with me to log on to one and be a student on the other side so I can show you those things. Um, but this allows you to kind of peek in as the kids are working to see how they're doing without logging into the reports. So this is something that you can enable. Do you see this? Because in my advanced settings, I'm requiring student admission submissions. For you guys, I'm gonna turn that off. So if people wanna skip around it, you have the power to do that. You're adults. Um, before we leave, I am gonna jump over to this Nearpod lesson library real quick. So some of these will be free with your silver free account. Some of these will not. These are all gonna appear free to me because my district license provides those upgrades. But it's really easy to search by subject, by grade level, and by resource type to filter what you're looking for. So I teach science and I teach high school. So I wanna look and see, you know what, why don't I, and now I wanna take this down, I wanna see full lessons. So I filtered it, filtered it, and filtered it. I also could come up here and I could search for more specifics, like maybe I'm looking for a lesson on the brain. And here's one right here, here's brain structures. So I can preview it from right here. And if it's something I like, I can click on it and it will put it in my library and it will put it on that landing page. So let me do that real quick so you can see what that looks like. And I keep getting into things that I'm gonna cover in a future lesson. I just, I can't quit talking about Nearpod. I flip and love it. I love it so much. So I'm gonna add this to my library. And now if I go to my library, it's gonna be on my landing page and it's probably gonna be down this way. Did I even save it to my library? Where did I put it? I may not have waited long enough. I didn't, I did a bad job with that. Anyway, here's some other ones that I downloaded from the library dealing with COVID, some emotional, um, social emotional learning support stuff. I can take this and I can edit it. It's made me a copy from a Nearpod pioneer who's been paid to build this content and I can edit it and I can make it my own. And then I can take it and I can add it to one of my folders. So that plus sign is where these folders come from. So I think I probably showed you more than I intended to for an intro. Nearpod, in my opinion, is well worth your time. If my district had not purchased the district license, I was ready to pull out my own credit card. Um, and pay for it because it is a phenomenal resource. Nearpod, once you get your account, they have professional development in here as well. And you can go through a Nearpod presentation, a series of them, become a Nearpod certified educator yourself, which is what I did and how I got my t-shirt because I then started presenting to other teachers because I knew my chance of my district purchasing it it, chances of them buying it just for me were pretty low, but if I shared with other teachers how awesome it was, my kids loved it, the information and the data that I get in those reports to inform my instruction is phenomenal. And then when we went to remote learning, being able to deliver content and interact with my kids and get authentic learning experiences in their hands for real grades on my end is one of the reasons it's the real deal. So I highly encourage you to make a free account. I'm going to do a follow-up video showing you from ground up how to make your account and log on and we'll go from there. So hopefully you'll stick around. Thanks for stopping by. I hope that you will love Nearpod as much as I love Nearpod. I don't know if that's possible. I love it so much. Bye.